Hi students, welcome back. Let's continue with our techniques for improving the pipeline process. So far, we discussed about uh, instruction execution phases, how the uh, instruction execution phases are useful for improving the pipeline process. And we also discussed about the mechanisms for instruction pipeline. So what mechanisms we need to be used so that the pipeline process performance can be increased. So these two stages we already discussed. Now let's discuss about a dynamic instruction. Okay, dynamic instruction scheduling technique. Okay, so this is a third method for improving the pipeline processor performance. Okay, so before going to understand about this dynamic instruction scheduling, I want to give an introduction part regarding the scheduling. So what exactly the scheduling is? Okay, what do you mean by scheduling and why we are using the scheduling and different uh, the two different types of scheduling. One is the static and another is the dynamic. When we are talking about the dynamic means obviously static scheduling is also there, right? So why we are not using the static? Why we are shifting to the dynamic? What is the reason of shifting to the dynamic instruction scheduling? And these dynamic instruction scheduling is useful for increase the or improve the pipeline processor performance. Okay. So this is what I'm going to discuss in this video students. So first let's see what exactly the scheduling is and what is the static scheduling in this video. In the next video, I'll explain about the dynamic instruction scheduling. Okay. So now let's see the basic part of the scheduling. So this is one of the third technique. Okay. For improving the pipeline processor performance. Okay. So now let's start with the concept. So first of all, uh, we know that what are the methods for scheduling instruction through an instruction pipeline that we have to learn in this uh, concept. So first of all, let's see what is this instruction scheduling is. You all know scheduling means what? Arranging the items or arranging the concept. If you want to do any operation, if you want to work out on anything, first what you will do? You will schedule a task in a proper manner. So, whenever you schedule any task in a proper manner, definitely you can achieve your task. So, in the companies also, meetings will be scheduled. Why the meetings will be scheduled? Because there should not be any overlap from one, uh, one employee to the other. Means some employees work on different concepts and other employees will work on different on concepts. So, to uh, overcome the overlaps, a scheduling concept will be used. In the same way, if the processor wants to execute something, a scheduling is very, very important. Otherwise, otherwise the pro processor cannot execute or sometimes the processor takes a lot of time to execute. So, to overcome that waiting time, we are using the scheduling concept. So, now let's see what is this instruction scheduling. Why we are using instruction scheduling? Instruction scheduling is used to minimize the hazards. First of all, you have to think instruction scheduling is used to minimize the hazards. Hazards are nothing but it's something like a, a gap between the instructions, a waiting time and errors. Okay, so that is the uh, hazards. So to, to minimize the hazards, we generally use the instruction scheduling. So this instruction scheduling is of two types. One is static scheduling and another is dynamic scheduling so i think you clear about what exactly the instruction scheduling is okay scheduling means arranging the instruction in a proper manner so that we are going to minimize the hazards so static scheduling means what and dynamic scheduling means what the one point i want to clear here static is nothing but uh, nothing about it is a software based approach it is a software based approach and what about the dynamic dynamic is a hardware based approach i think you clear about it static means software based approach and dynamic is hardware based approach so what do you understand by this point software based approach means anything you can do in programming software means a programming 
hardware means arranging the parts okay so if you do some uh, <coughs> excuse me if you do some modification in the software program obviously there is a chance of there is a chance of uh, to minimize the hazards okay if you want to minimize the hazards if you go with the software uh, based approach uh, that is you are using the static scheduling means uh, you are going to work on the software based approach when when you come across the dynamic approach dynamic approach is completely based on hardware means the installation at the time of purchasing any item you have to be uh, think in a manner that so what type of hardware parts you required and how, what type of arrangements you required so that your instructions are going to be executed without any hazards or with to minimize the hazards this is what exactly the concept is okay so i hope you understand what exactly the scheduling is and dynamic and static now let me explain you the static scheduling in clear so here we are came enter into our topic so i'll explain with an example student so watch the video till the end so that you get the clarity on what exactly the static scheduling how we are going to rearrange the instructions and how the software is going to rearrange the instructions so that the hazards is going to be minimized right okay so what i said it is a software based approach first thing is it is a software based approach so a data dependencies in a sequence of instructions are going to create interlocked relationship that which creates stalls in the pipeline right or wrong so when the pipeline uh, instructions are executed in a pipeline processor a stall will be appeared stall is nothing but it's a gap instruction execution okay one cycle is gap and next uh, uh, write back so like that it's a stall is nothing but a waiting time it is a stall is nothing but a waiting time so a data dependencies a data dependencies in sequence of instructions if you take the sequence of instruction means one instruction is executed first move r1 comma r2 next move r r3 comma r2 and add something like so these are the sequence of instructions r1 r2 sequence of instructions so data dependencies in sequence of instructions creates interlocked interlocked relationships relationships that is a pipeline hazards which creates stalls which creates stall in pipeline okay because here r2 is moving into r1 again r2 is moving to the r2 so after completion of these instruction only it is going to be executed okay before that we can't execute this after executing this we can't execute this instruction because there is a dependency here a dependency relationship between there from one instruction to the another instruction okay a data dependency in the sequence of instructions is going to create an interlock relationship which creates a stalls a gap in the pipeline okay stall is created then what what we have to do to overcome this to overcome this problem static instruction scheduling is used so here everyone is getting a confused or a doubt is going to arise so how this instruction scheduling is going to overcome this stall this data dependency let me explain you so i already said it is a software based approach okay just remember that point so the first of all the word static appears that is instruction is always scheduled by the compiler the static means okay instruction is always scheduled by compiler so you are going you you already written a program okay one thing is you are already written a program but your program is going to schedule by the compiler so that technique you call it as a static technique now you get the clarity on static technique right static scheduling the instruction that is scheduled by the compiler compiler is nothing but a software 
that's why we are calling it as a software based approach okay instruction is scheduled by the compiler then you call it as a static scheduling okay okay instruction is scheduled by the uh, compiler so what the compiler will do the compiler will check will check any dependencies any dependencies are there so it is going to check any dependencies are there suppose dependencies are there okay dependencies are there means one instruction is depending on another instruction so what it will going to do okay if any hazards or dependencies are there okay if dependency is there compiler will check any dependencies are there suppose if it is yes okay if it is yes what it is going to if dependencies are there then it will be solved at compile time it will solve at compile time before execution how how it is going to be solved by reorder the data this is very very important reordering the data okay this is what it is doing a static scheduling means the instruction is always scheduled by the compiler so compiler is what is doing compiler will check any dependencies are there in the instruction so one instruction to another instruction the registers or any dependency is there okay suppose if dependencies are there yes then what the compiler will do the compiler solves at compile time before execution so you are written a program right so after writing the program first what you have to do you have to compile the program after compile the program then only you are going to run the program so before entering into the running execution part compiler has to compile the program at this stage it is going to rearrange the instructions rearrange the instructions at the compile time only the instructions are rearranged so after rearranging the instructions there is no need to uh, we can minimize the hazards to run the program okay to run the program compiler is going to rearrange the instructions so that uh, a somewhat hazards can be minimized means we can we can escape the stalls in the program okay let me explain you with an example then you get a clarity on it so one thing you have to remember that compiler techniques are used for scheduling or rearranging the instruction remember that word okay these are compiler techniques are used for scheduling or rearranging the instruction suppose compiler separates the dip, what what exactly it is doing the compiler what it is doing compiler separates the dependent instructions or increment the separation dependent compiler separates the separates the dependent whatever the dependent instructions are there it is going to separate the dependent instructions or it increment the separation separate separation between dependencies it can do these two techniques okay compiler can separate the dependent instructions whatever the dependent instructions are all they all will be keep at aside and independent instructions are keep aside okay or else the increment uh, it increase the separation between the dependencies suppose one instruction is there okay second instruction instead of going to second instruction it go with the third instruction and then it go with the second instruction because after the two cycles only it is going to be completed then it is if it clear uh, without waiting the second instruction will take the data of the first instruction means a separation between the dependency it creates a separation this is what the separation is here okay so one thing you have to remember that even though you are doing the separations uh, there is no uh, like uh, rearrange will not affect the final output the rearrange will not affect the final output so instructions by doing these number of hazard stalls are reduced so now let me explain you with an example students i am taking an example for explaining the static scheduling so don't stop watching this video till the end student because if you see the example then you get the 
full clarity on what exactly the static scheduling is, then why we are going for dynamic scheduling. So let me take an example A is equal to B plus C. I am taking a general example, whatever it is there in your textbooks only. A is equal to B plus C, D is equal to E into F. So A, B, C, D, E, F are stored in memory. Okay. And assume load have a latency. Load have a latency or takes one cycle. One cycle to execute. I am talking about execute. Not for issue, not for storing, writing, not. Only for execute it taking one cycle. Remember that. Now let me write a original code for this. Original code. I'll write original code here and the compiler code here. Okay, after compiler. So, original code is, so what is an instruction? A is equal to B plus C and D is equal to E into F. This, this is our instruction, right? Now, load R1 comma B. Load, I'm writing a normal instruction. Load R2 comma C. I have to wait here. Why I have to wait? Because load, B is going to load in R1. Okay? B is going to load in R1. And it is taking from the memory and loading into R1. It takes two cycles. It takes two cycles. Right or wrong? It takes two cycles. And this is also taking the two cycles. Okay? Two cycles. Means total how many cycles? These two instructions are executing in total. Three cycles. Three cycles. But load has to be executed in two cycles. But this instruction is taking two cycles. And this instruction is taking two cycles. It is a pipeline processor. Pipeline processor means one one cycle after another it will be starting. Okay. So stall is created. Means here one clock cycle is waiting. One clock cycle is waiting. Okay. Now, after completion of these thing, B and C, then only you are going to perform an operation. Add R3, R1, R2. Because until the completion of R2 only, you are going to perform add operation. So, I can't perform here because it is still not completed. So, one stall has to be waited. So, whenever I wait, complete cycles are over. Okay, complete cycles are over. Then add perform is there. So, after performing, store this R3 value in A. So the first instruction is over. Now let's start with the second instruction. Load R4 comma E same. Load R5 comma F. Again stall is there because until these two instructions are completed we can't perform the multiplication operation. Mul R6 comma R4 comma R5. So R4, R5 are multiplied and result will be stored in R6. Now store R6 in D. D comma R6. So this is the original code. So how many stalls here? A two stalls are there. So now let's minimize this thing. So minimizing. So to overcome the compiler. Compile, uh, so now the compiler rearrange these instructions to overcome the stalls. So by rearranging the instructions there will not affect the final output. Remember. Whatever the arrange, rearrangement of instruction is there, there should not be any, uh, uh, that means there should, will not affect the final output. So, after applying the static instruction scheduling, after applying static instruction scheduling, okay, let me work on it. So, how I am going to rearrange the instruction, let us have a look here students. So, first I am doing the load operation R1 comma B. Okay. And as usual load R2 comma C. But I am not waiting here I, because I can't perform add operation because here only two cycles are there. But still uh, one to complete this operation one cycle has to be there. Three cycles. One, two, three because one, two, three. For executing two instructions uh, three cycles are required. So, two cycle, two cycles. So, now again I am performing load. Uh, this time I am going for R4. This instruction I am writing. R4 comma E. So after that, now R1 and R2 is holding the values of B and C. Now I can write add R3 comma R1 comma R2. So anyhow, so uh, before 
before completing this instruction i can't store the value in a so again i am rearranging the instruction this instruction r5 comma f meantime it is working on executing this instruction so meanwhile i am working on another instructions now i am storing this value store a comma r3 r3 is storing in a okay so now i am performing the multiplication r6 comma r4 comma r5 and again i am storing the value d comma r6 okay so that means b r1 c r2 e r4 so whenever it is over next the add can perform because at this two cycles it is uh, three cycles r2 r1 value you got so you can perform add op operation here r3 r1 r2 so this is how we can uh, overcome the or you can minimize the stalls in the program so this is the original code and after applying the static instruction scheduling this is the code the only one thing you have to be remember that static instruction scheduling is a software based approach okay so here the compiler is using to separate the dependent instructions or it it, it make or it increase the separation between the uh, dependencies okay so instructions by doing this number of hazard stalls are reduced so this is about the static scheduling then why we are going for the dynamic suppose if dependencies are unknown at compile time then it is okay sorry known at the compile time so dependencies at the compile time the compiler is able to understand is there any dependencies suppose if the compiler is not able to understand any dependencies then we are going for the dynamic scheduling so one point you have to be remembered that if dependencies are unknown at compile time then dynamic scheduling is used so in the next video i'll explain what exactly the dynamic scheduling is thank you